Hey y'all, um, I know it's been kind of a while since I've made a video, like almost a year, but I cannot let 12 months go by without me doing something for you guys. So um, this is a birthday present that I made for my boyfriend. His birthday is January 2nd, so it just came up. Um, it's a portrait of his brother, and I know a lot of you have requested that I kind of give a little bit more detail in the tutorial. So this one is actually, um, it took me four hours to draw and I've sped this one up only um, to one hour. So it's going to be broken down into a series of um, four 15 minute videos. I don't know if I can ramble through an hour worth of um, me drawing, but uh, I'll give it my best shot. So right now I am sketching out the, um, the portrait I started this, um, I wanted him to be able to print it out uh, as large as he wanted, so the document I set up um, is 300 dpi and the uh, width is 24 inches and the height is 36 inches. So it is incredibly large, um, which kind of makes things uh, slow up a little bit, but it's not too bad. I have recently upgraded my hardware from, I, I used to use a Wacom, Wacom, how the, how the fuck you say it, um, Bamboo Fun, and I have gotten a Cintiq over the past couple of months, so um, this is my first video using the Cintiq. It makes it a lot easier um, to control what I'm doing. I haven't found that my skill has improved that much, but that's basically because I haven't been drawing as much as I, as I should and I've been working too much. It's not, you know, the hardware that makes the artist. It's practice, practice, practice. So um, the Cintiq definitely makes things uh, a lot easier, a little more intuitive from the with the hand-eye coordination. So I don't know how much of the drawing you want me to explain, but I know sometimes people want to see the sketching process. So here it all is laid out. Um, when I'm sketching a, a photo from reference, or a picture from a photo reference, um, I try to pay attention to not only the lines, but the shapes. You want to look at um, distances between features and not necessarily uh, focus solely on, you know, this is the outline of the ear, this is where the ear should go. Because um, you'll find that you might get your proportions a little wonky if you're just placing elements without thinking of how they relate to the other aspects of the face. So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do here. I gave myself a, a few guidelines. Um, I guess it would probably make a lot of sense if, you know, since you're using Photoshop to utilize all of the tools that it comes with. And one of those tools would be the grid. Um, if you hit, uh, I use a Mac. So if you hit, uh, I want to say command R, it'll give you the ruler and you can make your own guidelines or you could hit command uh, and I want to say quotation mark and that will pop up your grid and that'll help you keep things in line I don't know I just I I kind of like when um, my art doesn't look exactly like the photograph because I don't know I, I started out really wanting to get stuff like incredibly photorealistic and really wanting to replicate my reference material but uh, I'm just not into that anymore I kind of want the things that I do to look um, I don't want to say special because that's like whatever, but it, uh, different. I want it to be a different piece because, I mean, copying pictures verbatim, you know, stroke for stroke is a good way to learn, um, you know, how to draw and how to do your own thing. But there comes a certain point when you kind of want to put your stamp on the stuff that you do. Um, right now, I am adjusting the proportions using the lasso tool. Uh, that would be L maybe is the shortcut for that. I'm, it's been so long. I've totally forgotten all my shortcuts, but I think it's L. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm moving stuff around. Basically, I did my line work on the layer above the background. So I've got my white background that I'm sketching on and then a layer on top of that for the line work. I'm using the same brush that I always use, the uh, palette knife brush from the Adonis collection that I always link in the info. Um, it's a uh, really nice kind of not not hard edged it it has a lot of similarities to when you're drawing with a pencil and if you're doing like something sketchy it's really nice I um when I'm drawing out the sketch I keep the flow and the opacity fairly high I usually do the flow at about 80% and the opacity 100 
when it comes time to color, you notch that stuff way down. You don't want to have a flow of more than like 20% if you're um, trying to go for that painterly style because that really helps you layer colors on top of each other. But for the sake of sketching, you would just be like sketching forever if you kept the flow low and the opacity low. So, um, you know, that's what's up with that. Um, I created a keyboard shortcut for uh, flipping the image back and forth um, because there's, you know, there's not a... Uh, an automatic command for uh, transform flip horizontal so I think I made mine like shift command period or something like that if it's not that big a deal for you if you don't mind going transform flip horizontal then you don't have to create a shortcut but you know the shortcut um, keyboard sh shortcut editing and creation tools are there to kind of help you improve your workflow like when I first started using uh, Photoshop I didn't focus enough on my workflow. I just kind of let myself be as inefficient as I wanted to be. And I've gradually learned, you know, to pay attention to your shortcuts um, and to uh, get your your workspace organized properly. So you can save your workspace so that, you know, if you know that you always need your layers palette open and your um, swatches palette, you know, you can save that workspace and, and make sure that everything is exactly where you need it to be so you're not always opening stuff up and tweaking stuff and whatnot. So um, I colored the background uh, like a, a warm, a warm tan uh, color. I, uh, I wanted to make the skin tone in this piece really warm and kind of use also a blue tone for the shirt to kind of do a blue brown sort of uh, situation. I like the way that that those two, like an orangey brown and blue, looks together, and they're they're fairly com complementary colors, and so you know it looks really good together. I'm doing something differently um, than I used to do in my old videos, and that's partially uh, attributable to the fact that I have you know a better tablet, and also because I'm just trying to you know kind of develop as an artist and not rely so much on the smudge tool and um, actually layer the colors a little more, bit more because it is faster. It's not like I have anything against this much tool. I still love it, but um, it's just quicker to get the, the layering and the smoothness achieved by the actual brush strokes as opposed to putting down color, blending it out, putting down color, blending it out. So I'm just trying to speed up my process so that I can draw more because I don't know, I work so much that it's hard to squeeze in, you know, the occasional picture it's even harder to do a picture and a video so I just want to not be super lame and go like months and months and months without any updates so I am using the same brush that I sketched with I pretty much use this brush throughout I would say like 97% of uh, every every picture that I do but like I said um, before when I was doing the sketch I actually throw down the opacity to about uh, like 50% I stay in the range between like 30 to 60% opacity and I um, have the flow usually set like 10 to 20% um, I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5 the Creative Suite 5 um, the layout the capabilities all the tools that I'm using there's they're pretty much the exact same as they were in CS4 CS3 all that stuff there was the new, there has been the new addition of the mixer brush, which is really sweet. Um, but I haven't played around with it enough to feel confident to like use it in a video as I'm recording. So maybe one of these I'll go over like how awesome the mixer brush is. But yeah. So you may notice that it's looking like um, my sketch is going away to a certain extent. That's because I'm currently painting on top of it. So I've got. The background color in its own layer and that's just because um, I might want to tweak it later and then on top of that I've got the rough sketch and then on, on a, in a layer on top of that I'm actually laying down the color so eventually um, all the color that I put on top of the sketch will cover it up basically but um, this doing it this way like painting on top of your sketch lets you keep some of the lines that you want to keep like and just refine them a little bit while uh, painting over, you know, what you think needs to go. So, um, I'm trying, um, I'm trying all kinds of different things in this, uh, this portrait, but instead of adding an overlay layer at the end and, um, tweaking the color, adding pinks and, uh, extra saturation and whatnot to the colors after the fact, I've been trying to, uh, get a little better at mixing the colors, um, you know, straight up. So, 
results not not too unfavorable so we'll just you know keep trying to improve and evolve in in that regard but um i'm still using the palette knife brush i um on my uh on the cintiq i you can set um one of the like scrolly uh command things to uh change the size of your brush so you might not see the brush menu popping up as i'm changing the size of it but um i keep i'm continuously making the brush bigger and smaller to uh suit whatever i'm trying to do at the time so you might not see that happening but it is i'm not really changing the opacity that much it's staying in general pretty low because the easiest way to just get uh, a harder you know a, a stronger amount of color is to make your brush size smaller and to push harder I, I mean that pretty much does it even if you're using like a bamboo it still has um, I want to say like 512 levels of sensitivity so you just really want to make sure that you um, use a really soft touch when you're when you're trying to layer colors on top of one another and get a nice blend but you know if you want a hard line you just push harder and uh, you know that takes care of it a good shortcut to use to make your brush larger and smaller um, are the left curly bracket and the right curly bracket or straight bracket whatever um, left curly bracket makes your brush size smaller right curly bracket makes it bigger so you know and then as you know the minus sign um, or the minus key the plus key zoom in and out and all that good stuff so if you don't know at least some of the shortcuts, or if you don't know the shortcuts for the tools that you use the most or the commands that you use the most, um, I would strongly, strongly advise that you get familiar with that stuff because it really does help. Like, I don't know, you don't realize the value of speeding up your process until you actually start doing it. It's like, holy crap, I was being retarded before, but now I'm not, so, you know, it's cool. Um, I'm working on his eye right now, also color picking a lot using the colors that are already down as opposed to trying to um, generate new colors as much. So if you got the brush tool selected and you want to just quickly color pick and keep going, you just hold down the eye key, um, don't release it, just hold it down and then you'll get your color picker and you can pick and then as soon as you release the eye key, you will revert back to using the brush. So that's pretty cool. I mean. I'm not, I can't remember if that's new to CS5, but if it is, just use, you know, B is the shortcut for your brush, and I is the shortcut for your eyedropper, so, um, you know, if you want to jump back and forth between those two, that's how you do it. So I'm painting over, like, I'm still using one layer, I know I used to, like, use a bazillion layers for, like, oh, I'll put the eye on this layer and the lips on this layer, and if that's, you know, if that's something that you need to do, like, that is totally fine. You know, I think that however, you know, however you achieve the results that you need, like use 50 layers of painting and use the smudge tool repeatedly. It's all, you know, it's all about your process. And I'm just, I'm continuously trying to figure out the best way to do this for me, like the, the, the fastest and, you know, how to get the results that I like the most. Cause I know what I like and, you know, I try to get there and, and whatnot. And, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm continuously checking out YouTube and DeviantArt and just the internets in general and trying to figure out how other people, you know, do their thing so that I can kind of take the lessons that might improve my process and kind of throw out the crap that I'm like, nope, that's, you know, that's not going to work for me. But, but, um, it's all about, you know, finding your stride and, and, uh, and sticking to it. So I'm going to cut this first video off. Um, yeah, it's almost 15 minutes, and uh, I'll see you for part two. Um, that's pretty much it. Sorry for rambling. And, you know, if you don't want to watch this whole thing, ah, don't. <laughs>